with a bang. Energy and change came to every part of our universe. Seismic or small. It continues. Change is all around us. Shaped by technology and human ingenuity. We can make it work for you and your business. Good morning. My name is Toby Winkup and I am ERM's Asia Pacific Mining and Metals Lead, based in Perth. Today, I want to share some thoughts and pose some questions on the rapidly evolving dynamic of social performance by mining companies and its impact on them. At the outset, I want to say this is not just an issue for the majors, but increasingly we are seeing this impact on the juniors and smaller firms, and as such, should be a concern for everyone. It is also important to note that this is an issue that goes beyond the mining sector, though it is fair to say, and will be explored further by my colleague Louise Pierce tomorrow, one that appears to impact the mining sector brand more than most. In sustainability terms, we're talking about the S in ESG, or the social in those three pillars of sustainability, environment, social, and governance. What happened in Yukon Gorge is the latest and most stark example that social risks, if unmanaged or underestimated, can have enormous cost. To be clear, this is not just about your license to operate. Social risk will, if it hasn't already, impact your access to capital regardless of source. And taking the Yukon Gorge incident as the most high profile example, lead to huge reputational damage that could take years to fix, executive firings, and in the not too far in the future, penalties, including the potential for imprisonment. And with the production imperatives, it is all too easy to lose sight of the impact to the indigenous communities, and in doing so, reinforcing their mistrust of mining companies and for traditional communities around the world, damaging the already suspect brand of mining. I have talked in previous conferences about the complexity of stakeholder groups across the mining and metals ecosystem and their varying expectations. But 2020 has seen expectations and influence rise rapidly from four key stakeholder groups. The impact and implications of which has gone from what was often voices in the background into a driving force for change in the sector. Firstly, the impact of investors initially in the loans they give demanding more alignment to ESG factors, but increasingly in how companies operate. It is no longer about the returns. This is increasingly linked to the brand traits of the financiers themselves. Secondly, supply chain interests in responsible sourcing. Your customers and end users are demanding greater transparency. The Responsible Steel Initiative it's just one of the many customer-led standards or initiatives that are emerging. We've also started to see a blurring of supply chain interests as end users seek more control. As an example, car companies in essence becoming miners, Tesla as a case in point. Community activism, in particular the fact social media is exposing these issues quicker and is connecting global stakeholders in a way we have not previously seen. The heightened social consciousness of injustices of equality in society as brought graphically into focus by the Black Lives Matter protests and the deeply entrenched systematic racism and more broadly social oppression and unconscious bias as many companies are having to address. Technology exposes the truths of our corporate underbelly. Things are now being filmed more than ever, so it is less and less one person's word against another. It is often quoted that it is not that there is more or less racism or social injustice in the world, 
it's just more of it being filmed. And to Childish Gambino's point in his song, This Is America, phones and social media are now a key weapon against injustice. Lastly, and I've avoided mentioning this until now, as I imagine it will be mentioned many times over the course of the conference, but one cannot ignore the tangible and more subtle longer term impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Tangible insofar as investors wanting to ensure projects are delivered and deliver the returns and are not snagged by social performance elements and the opportunity to help local communities through this. The more subtle impacts I see as people are forced to isolate. For many around the world, there has been a reflection on how fragile our way of life is. And one aspect of that going forward, considering what responsible businesses should look like and its societal impact in how we build back better. So why does the S differ from E and G in ESG? Well, there are many reasons, but I'll highlight three to start. The first is, it's not in your hands. You are dealing with emotions and evolving attitudes, as well as indigenous cultures and human rights. The ability to predict a broad group of stakeholders response to any given issue or opportunity or how to tailor a particular message to create clarity, separate truth from fiction, or build trust is getting more and more difficult. The second is, in most cases, you don't have good data. S-factors are less understood, defined, and measured, and the science behind it is just not understood. Hence, it is more of an intangible risk. The third is flashpoints often follow a long, slow burn. Timing and responses to social issues can lead to a heightened stakeholder response. And social media can whip up outrage overnight. Recent examples in Australia, Africa and America are testament to this. And not that I want to dwell on Jukan Gorge tragedy, but it is a stark reminder that rarely in the corporate world has a crisis stemming from the social license to operate resulted in the termination of a CEO. And there are some clear learnings from this for all resource companies in that internal systems and accountabilities relating to social risks need to be as robust for those as environment and governance. My colleagues at Critical Resource, one of the ERM group of companies, in looking at the Rio Tinto incident, identified a number of things that could have been done to mitigate what unfolded. It is important to share this with the sector today. Underestimate S in ESG at your peril. It holds the key to huge commercial as well as social value. Avoid taking too much pride in strong ESG policies and ratings. They can give you a false sense of security. Build and value a strong social radar for the company. Be aware of the sentiments behind the facts. Ensure bad socio-political news can flow upwards within the organization. Don't let a culture of silence or only good news expose the firm. Foster internal dissent on societal issues. A challenge process is actually healthy for a company's progress. And lastly, don't put too much reliance on community philanthropy, particularly at the expense of building resilient relationships and mitigating risks and impacts. CEOs should provide executives with a clearer status and mandate partly as the guardians of the company's social values. In the same way they look to the legal teams or HSE departments to guard against corporate infractions in their respective areas. Regular independent reviews of societal risks are another important tool. 
underestimating the S in ESG these days amplifies a material risk to the firm. So what does all this mean? Well, given the evolving and increasingly influential forces acting on mining companies, particularly the role of investors looking at the way you operate, the S in ESG, I believe, will grow in weight more than the E and G factors and impact everything from the access and battle for capital right through to your company's future brand perception. I do believe the more progressive companies, and we are seeing this, will embrace social issues as a clear value creator and not as a cost or risk mitigator or a compliance exercise for that matter, and will soon see it more as an opportunity. Being good at this over time will see be seen as being a differentiator and will have an effect on the winners and losers globally and locally in the sector. The decisions companies made in the past no longer align with the decisions that are required in this new decade. I hope my comments elicit some new thoughts for you and questions because as, as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, the issues associated with your social performance will only increase and will increasingly impact you and your customers' performance in the future. Thank you. With a bang, energy and change came to every part of our universe. Seismic or small, it continues. Change is all around us. Shaped by technology and human ingenuity. We can make it work for you and your business.